Hey what's up everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to use MVVM with Xamarin Forms. So what is MVVM? MVVM is an architectural uh, principle where you basically decouple your views, your view models and your models. So it's view, view model and model. So why do we do this? We do this because uh, when we do it all and I, I'm going to talk in Xamarin terms right now, if we call the database in co code behind and if we do all the logic logic in code behind our code becomes very tightly coupled and it's very hard for uh, discovering and removing bugs and adding features later on so as we split that up our code is a lot more testable and a lot cleaner and a lot easier to navigate so in Xamarin Forms uh, this principle is mostly used in Android is mostly MVP, in iOS development is MVC. Basically in most of .NET platforms it's MVVM, I think that was invented by Microsoft, but it really doesn't matter. So let's start off by creating a blank forms app. Let's call it MVVM. Go to next, let me just put this on the desktop, okay, and create a project. Okay, so we have our default Xamarin Forms project and first of all, let me build out the UI. So what are we going to have? We're going to have a simple button. So we need to add a button that's going to have maybe text that's going to say click me. That's going to have uh, and I think that should be it for now. Later we're going to add commands and whatnot. And here for this label, I don't think anything more is necessary right now. The next thing we need to do is add our page model. So our page model is basically a view model, but I am used to call it get for pages the page model, but you can call it whatever you want. Just be consistent with it. So we have our main page and we're going to treat our main page as the view. And now we're going to create a directory that will have all, all our page models. That's it. And now let's create a class that's going to be our view model. So it's main page model. And now we need to hook it up with our main page. So let's go to our main page .xaml.cs. And since we're going to be using the built-in Xamarin Forms binding, we need to set the binding context in the constructor. So let's do it. Binding context is equal to and we'll just create the instance of new main page model and we have to import the namespace and that's it so what is a binding context well we're going to bind commands which are basically event handlers if you're familiar with the term and all the properties that are going to be shown on the screen so maybe I for example put a string for a label in a binding context which is basically our page model which I'm I actually going to do right now so we'll have a public string that's going to be called label text and we're going to bind this label text to our view over here by doing this binding and I really don't remember what it was it called label text yeah Okay, we'll copy that and paste it right here. So now we binded the label text to the label text in here. Okay, now, oh, actually I messed that up. I shouldn't have bind the label text to the button. I didn't watch out. So let me just fix that real quick. Label text, okay. And now let's try and set this label text to hello. And let's try and run the app. Okay, a semicolon and let's set this to iOS. I connect and run the app. Okay, and as you can see, we have our app up and running and it says hello. That's because this label text property is connected to the view. And if we remove the binding context, this wouldn't work because 
the binding context determines from what class are we going to be binding from. Okay, so now let's add an event handler which is in MBVM called a command. So let's call it command binding. We'll just call it button clicked command. And now we need to create that property in our main page model. Okay, public command, let's import the namespace, button click command is equal to new command, and it's going to do, okay, and now let's try and change the label text to ABC. and rerun the app. Okay, now that we have our app up and running, let's click this button. It should change the text to ABC, but let's see what happens. And as you can see, it didn't change it. Why? Well, whenever we change a certain property that the view is bound to, we need to let the view know. And we let it know through iNotify property change interface which we then implement, which has a property change handler, and then we call it whenever we set a certain property. Okay, so now let's do this. I notify property changed. No, it's not interface. I think this is it. Yes, and now we implement the interface, and it gives us this property changed event handler. And now how are we going to use it? Well, I said that whenever we change the value of some property that the view is bound to, we call this event handler. So we need to add a private string since we're going to customize the get and basically just the set, but that's why we need this variable for. Okay, and now let's change it up. get is going to be label text and we're going to set that to hello and set is going to be well we always obviously set the label text to the value and now we call our property changed event handler we call the invoke method on it the sender is this and now we add property changed event arguments which have which basically has the name of the property that we're changing and here we're going to use name of label text and let me just put this in multiple lines so it's more readable okay now it's a lot more readable, let's just put a semicolon there and that's it. Let's rerun our app and see what happens. Okay, now our app is up and running again and let's now click the click me button and as you can see it, sh it changed the state. Okay, and that's basically it for this tutorial and as you can see uh, by implementing I notify change the interface, we had to write, I don't know what was that, like five or six extra lines, which is really not a problem for a very simple screen like this, where we have that one label and we need to change it up. But the problem arises when we have like 10 labels or 10 something that have a state in the main page model, in the any page model, then we need to write a lot of boilerplate code and that becomes a problem over time because our classes get really really big and that's why we use some external NuGet packages and that's what I'm going to show you in the next video and that's basically it I'll see you next time